surprise, y'all. I bet there was a moment just now when you thought to yourself, Oh, thank God. Thank the Maker. Thank literally what the heck ever recalcitrant entity was, is now, or perhaps always has been responsible for piloting this story. Whoever it is whose cataclysmic fingers hang suspended and quivering with anticipation somewhere beyond the curtain of the world, whose hunched form lurks forever in the shadows, its work seemingly unimpeded by the very real threat of a chronic lumbago, making no sound, giving no speech to thought, save for that fateful moment where first one elongated phalanx, and then another, crosses the threshold between thought and reality. When ten declamatory digits, possessed for the moment of a zealous frenzy, reached down and set the air astir with a heart-rending creative cacophony of an overly rambunctious mechanical keyboard. Whichever accursed species of demiurgic figure that is, you thought, let's just thank the ever-living bud that this time they decided to call it a night and get out the drawing tablet instead. Finally, this story is back on the rails. Maybe we can get back to what things were like in the good old days, where boys were brave, girls were guileful, authors were alliterative, and in various dubious states of non-undouble death. And this comic made at least a little bit of sense to more or less everybody. No more dealing with narrators, unreliable and not. No more embittered scrimmages over the bounding metafictional reality within which everything transpires. No more stupid, tank-tinted text. Your collective sigh of relief is deafening. Well, tough luck. This story... Dirk? What are you doing in there? Oh god, hang on a second. Gotta take care of this. Rose's voice echoes tenderly out of my newly alchemized, computer-integrated shades. The infidelity of the transmission is due to her voice being slightly too high definition for the speakers to reproduce it faithfully. There's an audio format even better than analog, it turns out, and that's what replaced Rose's vocal cords when I scooped up her rapidly dissipating soul and installed it in a robot body. I have it on authority that decanting is sometimes necessary to ensure a wine is at its best. I like to think that the same was ultimately true of her. Oh, nothing important. To the extent that anything that you or I do is even capable of being unimportant anymore. Which extent is admittedly teetering a few microns shy of Jack Zilch right about now? The point is, don't worry about it, I'm just doing a bit of housekeeping. Well, pardon me for interrupting a prior engagement. Don't let me get in the way of all the dusting you must be doing. I just imagined you wearing an apron over your god tier outfit and almost felt my facial fuselage buckle in such a way as to approximate a fleeting smile. Dang, you got me. Your uncanny seer powers are at work once again. I'm just waiting here for an air and gust of wind to jostle my petticoats, unfortunately exposing my undergarments to the lurid gaze of whatever prurient peeper might be watching. Don't look, I cry in futile embarrassment. But the damage is done. My fragile anime purity has been shamelessly violated. Ah yes, the animes. A bottomless resource of good-natured humor. Ha. <laughs> That ungodly noise of screeching metal you just heard was my titanium-reinforced thorax crumbling into a cartoonish posture of helpless mirth. Alright, we get it. You are literally a robot. No need to keep pointing it out every chance you can get. I used to get enough of this with the autoresponder. I'm just playing along. One of the fundamentals of bad science fiction is that any artificial beings must make their inorganic nature known at every juncture they can. Do overly precise and completely meaningless statistics that you pull out of thin air on the fly also count? Oh, absolutely. That's one of the first things you just sort of spontaneously learn when being booted up. For example, I've calculated that by making these remarks, I have raised the base level of amusement in all my conversations by 36%. Well, I don't personally find them very funny. No, but I do. It averages out, you see. Okay, but like, what are you actually calling me about? I just thought you might like to know that we're getting pretty close to your chosen crash site. We can head down to the planet below as soon as Terezi's finished. Working out how we do that. How to land? Wait, crash site? 
Yes. Among the features of this ship that were considered indispensable by its creator, which included multiple fully stocked drinks cabinets, a movie theater, and an eight-lane shooting range, a landing gear appears to have fallen just a little outside the realm of vital. Or rather, hurtled into the ground. Like we'll be doing, in case the message wasn't clear. Ah, uh, gotcha. God curse it, English. Assuming your busy work is more or less done by now, I'll get your Resi to set a course. If she hasn't wandered away from the helm already. She's been getting pretty impatient. So, I just want to get this on complete lockdown before I strap myself into the safety harness we'd all better hope wasn't also omitted from the design schematic of this stupid ship. We're letting Terezi smash us into the planet we've been hunting for three years. Should she even be driving this thing? Don't be such a chud, Dirk. Of the three of us, she has by far the most experience operating any kind of flying vessel. And just as much, if not more, experience of crashing them. Besides, it's not like the two of us have anything to worry about. It's Terezi that needs to be careful. She's functionally mortal, remember? You mean to say that you don't think we'd be in peril if it came to it? There's nothing about our situation that strikes you as falling within the bounds of precarity as far as the rules are concerned. Oh, you're right. I suppose I hadn't thought of that. But I think we can remain calm in the knowledge that nothing particularly heroic is going on right now. At least, not that I'm aware of. Right. Give me a couple more minutes here, then we can head planet side. There's a few stray dust modes still left to eradicate. Just don't get too attached to having everything organized neatly, will you? Rose signs off the call without much fuss. She knows that I'm not really cleaning, but doesn't care enough to know what I'm actually doing. I know that she knows this, but I don't care enough that she knows, nor do I care that she doesn't care. We're all just here, not giving a flying hoot like a normal, functioning group of people. I walk- oh no, right, I don't have to do that explicitly. It's easy to get into the habit of just narrating everything, even when it's a bit creatively redundant. This is where the advantage of visuals comes in, to make my life as an omniscient overseer a little bit less tedious. I can just do whatever, and we can all see it happen, and nobody has to fight with a testy cheerup lady for control of their own legs or anything. No need to conjure a whole thesaurus out of the meta-narrative nowhere just so I can go to the bathroom. Seriously, it's a big relief. That doesn't mean this... Gestures to the narrative isn't still going to be a thing, though. Sometimes retreating back into the warm, welcoming fold of traditional prose is just going to be the best way forward. And as someone whose mind is uniquely capable of understanding this conceit, I'll be the determining factor as to when and where it happens. I think that's more than reasonable. And yes, I am capable of being reasonable. All in all, I think you'll find, as far as narrators go, I'm an excellent... On second thought, maybe that's a bit of a problematic phrase. Yeah, yikes, that one's got a sordid history. Best we steer clear of it. We're all lucky I'm around to make those kinds of sensitivity judgments on everyone's behalf. Speaking of which, I think it's time I started undoing some of the more egregious mistakes this story has been subjected to over the years. Yes, I'm talking about that guy. The other orange one. Remember him? Vriska got stalked by him a bit and it was uncomfortable for everyone concerned. Anyway, the point is that he screwed up big time and I'm here to deal with the fallout. It's time to get this story back on the rails, back to what it was always supposed to be. I know it, and you somehow always known it too. There was something else, some other route, that Homestuck was meant to take but then didn't, a way that wouldn't have spent so much time messing around with stuff nobody cares about. 
Like, seriously, why did we all have to sit through talking about everyone's most intimate and private feelings for 200,000 heck begotten words? That would never have happened in Act 1. Where did it all go wrong? I've had some time to think about these kinds of problems and to come up with a solution. And I'm prepared to do what he couldn't in order to save Paradox Space from the destruction brought upon it. I'll do what it takes and don't think I won't. The author is dead. Long live the author. Look, I know what you're all really craving. I've been studying canon, or rather what's left of it, and I think I've found it. The critical moment in the wake of which everything started to take a nosedive into the protracted, endless slog of sheer insufferability we got saddled with near the end. This was the single most crucial error in the process that led to the present situation. The day when the story was wrested screaming from the arms of its readers like a bawling infant and carried helplessly away. From then on to be raised according to the whims of a masochistic menace with no thought for you, the common fan. So now, I propose we turn the clock back to a better era and take back what was rightfully ours. No longer will the way forward be subject to tyrannical rule. No more shall the will of the masses be cajoled and browbeaten by the impervious hus-nasty diktat. Never again will we have to endure the terrible beating of wings as the great moth of titillation arrests the humors of an enormous terrible old beggar, whose vulturous leathery vice grip holds us close and whispers I know best in the dead of night. It's time. My name is Dirk Strider. What will I do?